the perfect arrangement. Hello, Flora Flower Shop. We deliver flowers. You want some flowers delivered? A fast talker, a phone line, and a blooming business. Yeah, you want some flowers delivered? I'm ready. No one knew who he was. He would not give me his name. No one even knew where he was. What he's doing is crooked. And I had to find him. Jim, I think you know what you're doing is wrong. No, it's not. Wait till you get a load of this character. <laughs> Stop that, okay? Before anybody stops it, let me tell you how it all started. It was Alexandra's birthday. Her boyfriend just wanted to do something nice, send flowers to her at work. Alexandra's boyfriend lives in Pontiac, but she works in Novi, 20 miles away. He didn't know the name of any florist out there, so he did what a lot of us would do. Picked up the phone, called information, asked for a florist in Novi. Flores Flower Shop, we deliver flowers. You want some flowers delivered? The fast talking florist talked him into spending $115. That should buy a pretty big flower arrangement. But when the delivery arrived, both Alexandra and her boyfriend were bummed. He asked me, What would you have paid? And I said, Look, it's probably about a $40 arrangement. And then he told me that he had paid $115 for them. Alex knew something was wrong. And I said, Where'd you get them? And he said, I got them from the Novi Florist. And I said, gosh, you know, I've worked in Novi for over eight years. I've never heard of a Novi florist. But sure enough, there was a number in the phone book. So she called. Flores Flower Shop, we deliver flowers. Do you want to order some flowers? And I said, no, I want to talk to the owner. He said, this is the owner. I have nothing to say to you. And he hung up. In fact, the guy hung up on her a bunch of times. Wouldn't even tell her where the Novi florist was. So Alex grabbed the little envelope that came with the flowers. But to her surprise, it read, the little flower shop in Farmington Hills. Carol Fitzpatrick says her shop delivered the flowers, but they didn't get the order from Alex's boyfriend, and it sure wasn't an order for $115. The order was wired to me through Florist Interlink, and it was wired to me at a total of $60. There's a big difference between a $60 flower arrangement and a $115 flower arrangement. So what happened to the missing $55? And why didn't the Novi florist just fill the order himself? I went looking for the Novi florist to get some answers, but I couldn't find him in Novi. I couldn't even find him in Michigan. And the only way I did find him was by placing an order with him and tracing the credit card bill back to his real shop. And where was that? Welcome to the home of the Novi florist. Welcome to Waukesha, Wisconsin. You two are being ripped off right now. His name's Jim Posse, and he knows ripoffs. He's running a little flower empire from his Waukesha shop. See, not only is he the Novi florist, he's got phony flower shops listed all over. In fact, if you call information and ask for a florist in any of these cities, guess who you'll probably get? Jim. Hello, Flores Flower Shop. We deliver flowers. You want some flowers delivered? Remember, all these people think they're calling a flower shop up the street. They have no idea they're calling a middleman in Dairyland who's milking 50 bucks out of every order, just like he did with Alexandra's birthday bouquet. Did you take $50 from that order? Paid $115. Well, the I, florist I, got I have, 60 I have taken profit, which I am supposed to uh, allow by law. Taking profits, one thing. But he's taking orders for $115 bouquets and placing $60 orders with your local florist. And he's banking on the fact you won't know the difference. It's not a, uh, what you call uh, a ripoff. Rip -off. It's a ripoff. No, it's Jim. not. Okay. Jim, I wait, think wait, it's wait, a ripoff. Wait, wait, wait. Jim, it's I'm a ripoff. No, no. The no, guy's paying $115, and you're pocketing no, no. $50. I have to make money. And it doesn't seem to bother Jim how he makes it. This is a guy with a colorful criminal history, including a felony conviction for misusing someone's debit card. I think you're totally cheating. I, I am think not. you're cheating the other floors, and I think you're cheating the customers. I am not. And I think you're cheating the no. people of Michigan and California, no, wherever no, else all these no, phones no, are no, right no. now. That yeah, is totally man. absurd. You, you are, Jim. Flores, flowers you know shop. you are. We deliver flowers. You want some flowers delivered? Jim goes back to answering the phones. That's okay. I got a feeling they won't be ringing quite as much now that you've seen this store. Flower delivery. It's for you, Jim. With love from. The Hall of Shame. Shame on you. Put me in a rubber I... suit for Jesus. Meet Rick Sherman. Hey, everybody. I'm concerned with your soul. Rick likes to talk about Jesus. 
I'd hate to see Dude, you go to hell. Calm down, calm no, down. No, no, okay. see, I'm excited because I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Okay. He's full of something, all right, but he's not fooling me. All this guy's trying to do is change the subject, and he's hiding behind Jesus to do it. Put me on TV. Everybody needs to know about Jesus. But what people really need to know is this guy is a minister with a sinister past. Besides, I'm not here to talk about God. I'm here to talk about dog. I don't know anything about dogs, but but I know a lot about Jesus. But these people say Rick knows enough about dogs to trick them out of theirs to sell to somebody else. To me, it's just a sick way to supplement your income. This is Susie the dog. Cheryl placed an ad on Craigslist asking if anyone would adopt Susie. No charge, just promised to give her a good forever home. Her first call was from Rick Sherman and his wife Maria. And they sounded like wonderful people. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep her inside, we have a nice fenced in yard, so it just sounded perfect. Rick and Maria drove up to Cheryl's house in their shiny black Cadillac. Said they wanted the dog to keep as a pet forever. Cheryl went to bed that night happy, knowing Susie had a nice new home. But the next morning, Cheryl broke into tears when she saw this ad on Craigslist. It's Susie, for sale for $125. If you look at the picture, she looks so sad, and I felt duped. Cheryl and her family drove to Rick and Maria's house, determined to get Susie back, but Susie was already sold. And the nice church-going couple, Rick and Maria, now weren't so nice. Maria right away got on the phone and called 911 and called the police on us. And her husband laughed in my face and told me, you invited me into your home and you gave me your dog and there's nothing you can do about it. And he started laughing at me. Cheryl went home and wrote a tearful plea on Craigslist. A plea that was seen by the person who'd bought the dog, Nicole. And I saw some frantic posts um, from someone saying whoever adopted the labradoodle from east point last night please contact me nicole didn't know what to make of it she just bought susie from a nice religious couple named rick and maria for 125 dollars claimed they'd had susie since she was a puppy they said that they were moving they were moving all right moving dogs nicole contacted cheryl and realized everything maria had told her about susie was bogus. Oh, she lied. She lied to me and my five children standing right beside me. It's just unbelievable. Susie lucked out and got a good home, but that may not be the case with all the other dogs Rick and Maria Sherman have done this to. This is Barbara. A year ago, Rick and Maria answered her dog post on Craigslist. They said they were going to keep the dog forever? Yes, that was what we were told. But when Barbara tried for months to check up on the dog she had to give away, no one at the Sherman home answered. No response. Barbara has no idea where her dog ended up. She said she was religious and she had to move and she didn't want to get rid of the dog, but she had to. Melody and her husband Bobby paid $275 for this dog from Rick and Maria in December. Gave her the money and she couldn't give me the dog fast enough, jumped in her car and was gone. No goodbye to the dog. I immediately knew something was wrong or fishy. Even though Maria said the dog hadn't been neutered, it still had stitches from surgery. And it looked similar to a dog Bobby had seen a few days earlier on Craigslist. Bobby contacted that dog's owner. And guess what? He said he'd place the dog with Rick and Maria, who promised it a lifelong home. We put two to two together and found out that basically she lied to him, got the dog for really cheap and turned around and sold it for a, a huge profit. I started bird dog in Rick and Maria's house. And sure enough, I saw dogs, different dogs. And even when you just Google Maria's phone number, all kinds of dog wanted ads show up. Time for me to find out what's going on, dog gone it. You running a dog business here? Excuse me. Maria. Excuse me. Hey, I'm trying to ask you some questions. Are you running a dog business here? Maria runs inside and calls the cops, just like she did to Cheryl. Now here comes the big dog. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, how are you, Rick? Uh, excuse me? You're Rick, right? Uh, um, what's your name? I'm Rob Walchuk from Fox hey, nice 2. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Hey, I want to ask... You, have you received Jesus Christ as your savior? Can't say I was expecting that. Rick decides... He's the one who's gonna do the talking. So, I let him talk. I'm asking you, have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? I sure have. And talk. Have you ever witnessed to somebody about Jesus? Or are you ashamed of Jesus? You just said you were a Christian, but now you won't talk to me about Jesus. So you're ashamed about Jesus. And talk. 
I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? I have love you, Jesus. Have you ever witnessed anybody about Jesus? I also love Jesus? listening to somebody tell me the truth okay, about what's going on. I'm telling you the truth. On. Rick, come on and answer yeah, some you, questions. No, I no, want to ask I'm you about you this question. dog stuff. I'm asking you a okay? question. I want to find out about the dog stuff. I, I don't know stuff, anything about okay? dogs, but I'm, but I'm, see, I'm concerned about your soul. Maria keeps popping in and out, but neither her nor Rick are answering any questions about their dog business. Business. I don't know anything about dogs, but but I know a lot about Jesus. By now, Rick's drawn the attention of his neighbors. Hey, everybody, I'm concerned with your soul. If you haven't okay. repented and believed in Jesus... How'd you like to live next to this guy? But it's your opportunity to, as a Christian to try to get this out on the air right now before the cops come that Jesus Christ is Lord and that people need to believe in him. They're going to put this you is in your, a rubber this, suit, dude. This That's is, what they're no, going to no, because Put me in a rubber I... suit for Jesus. Brother. Rick Sherman may have never worn a rubber suit, but he has worn a prison suit. Yep, old religious Rick the Dog Man spent five years in the doghouse. In 1997, Rick pled guilty to two counts of felony assault with bodily harm less than murder. Now Rick's out of prison. What would Jesus do? I guarantee you, it wouldn't be tricking people out of their dogs. Rick and Maria, you may think you're going to heaven, but I got a place you can stay until you get there. You're in the Hall of Shame. I'm gonna go to the place that's the best. Welcome to the Grandmont One Subdivision, Northwest Detroit's pride community. Take a ride down any of Grandmont One's clean streets and you'll see beautiful older brick houses meticulously cared for. That is, with one exception. There are people that think your cars look junky out there. And I don't give a f what they think. His name's Robert Taylor, and before you think he's just the neighborhood nut. Uh, somebody has been f with me. Wait till you hear what why. this guy does for a living. Well, maybe... No, no, wait a minute. Well, hey, 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 no, don't go yelling at me, pal. But first, meet Grandma One's association president, Ron Johnson. We're trying to keep our neighborhood to the standards it always been. Ron and his committee meet each month to make sure everyone that lives here keeps their houses looking nice. Once in a while, they might find a neighbor with a junky car on the lawn. They might find a neighbor with a dangerous, broken down refrigerator stuck on their property. Windows with temporary patches that just plain look ugly. Then there's Robert Taylor's house, a place that has all of the above and more. Taylor's backyard looks more like a junkyard. Our organization will help you clean up mm -hmm. your area if you have a reason that you cannot do it on your own. Offers of neighborly help Robert Taylor's been turning down for years. Our opinion is it's a safety hazard, health hazard, and environmental hazard to the community. The Detroit police agree. So this isn't just an eyesore, this is a danger. Yes. Yes. Take a look at all the tickets environmental officer Todd Ward has issued Robert Taylor. He's made a mockery of the system. Tickets for having rat harbors, nine inoperable cars leaking oil and gas, a dangerous dilapidated garage, a gate blocking a public sidewalk. Officer Randy Coleman's ticketed Taylor too. Taylor's response? To cuss the officer out. A lot of citizens don't want to be involved because they're afraid of him. Well, I'm not, so let's pay Trash Yard Taylor a little visit. Hi there, I'm Rob Walchek from Fox News. Can I ask you a few questions? Because how come you got all these junky cars in your backyard? Oh, you're full of shit. And good day to you too, Mr. Taylor. I want to well, know no, why well, you got all these cars in your backyard. Because it's my is right. It? No, it's not. The it's the neighborhood. I have a This is a neighborhood. Do you think hey, that people... Hey, I've been here 30 years. Listen, buddy, you don't have to call me names. I'm well, just like, asking uh, you some questions. Well, like, uh, you're asking the wrong questions. All right, well, let's try a different question. So what about the cops? The cops have written a bunch of tickets uh, to you, haven't they? Yes, I would like to talk about the cops. Dockery and Crook co co committed perjury. Flat <laughs> lie. I don't know who they are. I'm not uh, interested two, two, in them. Two I'm, cops. I'm interested in, in well, police I'm officers that have given you tickets. Why uh, are you, are you kicking no. mud on to me? No. Okay, well, what are you doing then? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Maybe this guy's a nut. Maybe he can't hold down a job, doesn't have the money to fix up his property. Nope. See that badge around his neck? This guy's got a good job. He works as an engineer for the City of Detroit Water Department. There are people that are upset about you. You're f the people. Well, we know Robert Taylor doesn't care what I think, doesn't care what his neighbors think, doesn't care what the cops think. I guess Robert Taylor doesn't care what the judge thinks either because 
He was supposed to be in court here this morning. Now there's a warrant for his arrest. Since Taylor had been ignoring all those tickets and then didn't even have the decency to show up to court when ordered to appear, the judge threw the book at him when he finally did drop by. His sentence? 30 days in the Wayne County Jail. Maybe when Robert gets out, he'll change his attitude towards others. I don't give a what they think. And eh, maybe not. You know, Robert, I bet you think it's pretty lousy that you're in the county jail, but in your own words, I don't give a what you think. You're in the Hall of Shame. <laughs> This is Hi. Mick. I want to ask you a couple of questions. If I can answer. Sure. <laughs> this is a Mick massage. There's a bone right there. Feel it. Oh. Here's a Mick malarkey. But you do do chiropractic things. I don't, I swear to God. Mick right. likes to massage the truth while giving his rub down. My third cousin plays fairways. Oh, yeah? Who's that? Darren McCarty. Here's Darren McCarty. Well, maybe you should come on over and have a conversation with me, though. Oh, this massage man is really slathering on the BS. I'm going to the uh, Olympics this year. Mick is rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. He could break somebody's neck. He doesn't know what he's doing. Lindsay is a massage therapist. She used to work with Mick at Hands For You in Southgate. Lisa worked with Mick there, too. This is not a man who is an ethical, responsible massage therapist. Both these professionals take their massage work seriously. Years of schooling and training are required before you can hang your certificates on the wall of a legitimate massage therapy clinic. But Mick's certificates? They appear to be doctor. This seal here isn't embossed with anything. Some just seemed phony, just like a lot of the things Mick claimed. He said, he was a the team massage therapist for the Detroit Lions. According to Miklos Penzis' business card, he's a national certified massage therapist, a certified Reiki master, and a lymphatic drainage specialist. Pretty impressive credentials in the massage world, but Lindsay says his massage work was anything but. If I was a client and I knew what I know, I wouldn't be going to see somebody like that. Massages are supposed to only involve tissue manipulation, but Lisa says, Mick is rough, so rough he moves bones like a chiropractor. So what he's doing is actually dangerous. Yes, it is. He doesn't know what he's doing. If you don't have the appropriate training, the appropriate chiropractic training, you can seriously harm someone. Sounds like a job for one of my undercover camera people to crack. You look fairly fit. Mick yaks a lot while he yanks my undercover camera person, first boasting that he's on the sidelines of every Lions game giving massages. So are you their full-time masseuse like they yep. have for the Red Wings? Yep. Oh, that's nice. Well, I used to do for the Red Wings, and then I gave it up because I actually got the Lions. And Mick is really selling it. God, I can't wait till the season starts. Next comes his boast that he's Darren McCarty's cousin. My third cousin plays for the Wings. Oh, yeah? Who's that? Darren McCarty. So is Darren a nice guy? Yeah, so-so. This guy could win a medal for storytelling. Speaking of that... Oh, I've got something. I'm going to the uh, Olympics this year. I'm one of the 40 individuals throughout the country that got picked for the U.S. Massage team. When do you leave for that? August 11th. After pulling his client's leg with his stories, right it's here. time for Mick to start pulling her arm. I'm gonna stretch that nerve now. Oh. Oh. You all right? What the hell did you just do to me? <laughs> I stretched that entire nerve that was going on on you all the time. Uh-huh. Oh my God. Dr. Saul Kogan, chairman of the Michigan Board of Chiropractic, took a look at our undercover video and said this. He manipulated her and that is so far outside of the scope of what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> a move like that done by someone that's not trained could be very dangerous. And the doc also happens to be on the sidelines of every Detroit Lions game. He's a team chiropractor. And you never heard of this guy, Mick? Never ever heard of him. Mick Lowe's Penzis? No, sir. I showed Mick's picture to his supposed relative and client, four-time Stanley Cup champion, Darren McCarty. What's he got to say about Mick's claims? This is not true. Don't be hoaxed by this guy. Do you really want to hurt me? Time for me to go put this massage man flat on his back. Do you know McCarty? And yes. How do you know him? Through working on him. Through working on him? Uh-huh. You're not related to him? No? Uh -huh. so do you tell people that you're related to him? I, I've told a friend of mine before that we were like cousins and stuff like that. But you're not? No, I'm not. So why'd you say that? 
It's just between friends, just screwing around. Well, my undercover camera person sure wasn't his friend. She was a first-time paying customer. And how many hours of, of uh, training do you have for just regular massage? 500. 500? Okay. Don't you have a certificate hanging on the wall that says that you have 1,500? Mm-hmm. So if you only have 500, how come the certificate says 15? Because it was me. Because it was you? Yeah, I, I put it on there. Well, why'd you do that? Again, just being silly. Hmm, wonder if the people who come to him for the legitimate therapy he advertises on his card will appreciate mixed silliness. You say you're a Reiki master? Yes, sir. What's Reiki? Take a look. Reiki basically is a Japanese form of stress reduction and relaxation that also promotes healing. William Lee Rand is the president of the International Center for Reiki Training. It's a spiritual thing, involves positive energy flow. Quite a departure from what Mick practiced on this client. Our certification process takes about three years. But Mick tells me he got his Reiki master certificate in school from Irene's Myomassology. Same school he got his national certification in massage therapy. So I'm just certified through the school. Which school was that? Irene's again. Really, Mick? Must you? They do not get certified at our school. Kathy runs Irene's School of Myomassology in Southfield. She says Mick was a student there a few years back, completed 500 hours of general massage training that included some Reiki classes, but that was about it. Finally, there's the Olympic story. Remember, Mick claims he's on the U.S. massage team. What are you doing in August? This August? Yeah. Like August 11, what are you doing, anything? No, I'm going to a tournament with my daughter on you're the 14th. You're not going to the Olympics? Oh. You're not? Don't you tell people you're going to the Olympics? I'm going to the uh, Olympics this year. Mick, I think you're lying. I'm not lying. Mick, you may not be going to the Olympics, but you've set a new world record for most BS during a massage session. You're in the Hall of Shame. Meet David Werner, the force behind AmeriForce. You're promising people jobs, though, yeah, right? No, no, no. Well, your employees are no. promising jobs. I'd have to see that. Oh, he'll see it all right. Buckle up your seatbelt, put your tray in its upright and locked position, because we're going to take a trip to Ripoff Land. I wish that I could fly. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? This is Fox 2 undercover video inside AmeriForce's Warren office. These salespeople want $85 to set you up with a job in the airline industry. The airlines contract you as like an employment yes. agency. If you call the airlines and try to get a job, they're going to give you our number. That, my friends, is a crock. These guys seem to be making it up as they go along. The Northwest is laying people off, aren't they? Okay, now. Yeah, they actually, they are laying people off, which is kind of crazy, but then again, they're hiring too. Who are they trying to fool? Now they're saying if you pay that 85 bucks, you'll have employers fighting over you. You might get a call from um, Delta and Continental all in one day, and one is telling you on the phone, okay, I'm willing to pay you 13 an hour. Then you say, well, hey, I just got an offer over here for 14. Okay, well, I'll pay you 14.50. Come on in for an interview. Let me see what you're about. It all sounds pretty promising, especially to someone out of work like Jeremy. Yeah, he said they're hiring like crazy right now. Jeremy saw this ad in the paper. Ameriforce, airline jobs, 12 to 20 bucks an hour. If you don't get hired, you get your money back. Rachel called about the ad, too. The folks at Ameriforce said her career was about to take off. Even artist, an unemployed single mom who'd once worked for Delta, was told to set her sights sky high after signing up with Ameriforce. They told me it was $85, refundable, but they guarantee you a job. Artists bought the Ameriforce package. She got this booklet and a couple of general airline applications. She filled them out and sent them in to a whole bunch of airlines, just like they told her at the Ameriforce office. But she didn't get a call from Delta and Continental in the same day. In fact, she didn't get any calls at all. All she got was this letter from Southwest Airlines telling her she'd been duped. It says right here, the company cannot accept this application, and the folks at Southwest absolutely do not condone companies like Ameriforce. And they all run uh, usually a blind ad in the classified section of the local papers. Sherry Phelps is the Director of Corporate Employment for Southwest Airlines. 
I have very little sympathy for a company that, that would take advantage of people in that way. Keith, a pilot for a major airline, agrees. Anybody who wants a job at an airline can apply to that airline. And applying doesn't cost you $85, it's free. Problem is, there just aren't any jobs right now. I've got uh, 15 years and a captain, and I'm definitely going to be laid off this summer. Dr. Bill Kaufman is a professor of aviation at the University of Michigan. All the airlines are laying off at all levels. Ah, sure, professor. But maybe this $85 booklet has some specialized information you can't offer at the university. Maybe not. Does this stapled together photocopied pamphlet filled with misspellings and grammatical errors look like it's worth 85 bucks to you? It sure doesn't to anybody I've shown it to. I would say this is just junk. It's time for me to ground a mirror for us. Oh, there. Oh, my God. Here to see David Werner. Some of the Ameriforce phone jockeys hide their faces. Others just yuck it up. Remember this guy? But the big boss, Dave, he just hides out in the back office. Instead, he sends his muscle to do his dirty work. You don't wish to talk to you. You have to make an appointment. Tank, could he come out and tell me that? I just did. He's rough. Appreciate you get that camera out of my face. He's tough. So who is he? I'm a telemarketer. He's a rough, tough telemarketer. Ooh. David Werner really doesn't want to talk to me. He even calls the cops on us. That's okay. I'll just camp out here on the curb and wait for him. After two hours of waiting and watching these guys watch us, David Werner finally realizes I'm not going away. You're selling jobs, right? No, we don't sell jobs. No? We're publications. Mm -hmm. We print material and we prepare resumes. But don't you advertise that you guys have jobs? Right here, the newspaper. Isn't that your ad? Now hiring, $12 to $20 an hour, flight attendant. Reservation is baggage handlers. It sure is, Dave, and it says right on it, now hiring. He's not hiring anybody. He's just trying to sell that crummy book for 85 bucks. Like I said, I'm a busy man. Okay, yeah, listen. With that, David Werner hops in his fancy vet and takes off. And we're not doing nothing wrong. Just a few days ago, Ameriforce was flying high. But since my visit, I want to get away. They bailed out. I guess Amira Fours was just an Amira Farce. Well, Dave, as the flight attendants always say when you're leaving the plane, bye bye. You're in the Hall of Shame. Shame on you. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. You know those songs people sing on long road trips? 99 bottles of beer on the wall. The wheels on the bus go round and round. Well, Spencer here has a new one. Sing along if you know the words. Talk to my lawyer, man. Talk it over my lawyer. You can talk to my lawyer. Talk, 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 talk to my lawyer. Spencer runs a charter bus company. Do you own a bus? Talk to my lawyer, man. Some of Spencer's customers say he takes your money and doesn't deliver the ride. Talk it over my lawyer. And if you're an unhappy customer of Spencer's, guess what he'll probably tell you? Talk to my lawyer. That's exactly what he told Dave. The bus was supposed to be at one. Dave booked a trip for 46 of his sports crazy pals to see the Tigers play the Indians in Cleveland. He paid Cedric Spencer of Spencer's Travel Service $1,100 up front to get them to the game. He just never showed up. That's Ryan, one of Dave's 46 friends. Here's another, Derek. And it just wasn't cool. You know, he said the bus was coming. The bus never came. It was just a bunch of crap. Dave thought maybe the bus was just late. He desperately tried to contact Spencer. I call him, no answer. I call him again, probably 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes, he does not answer my phone calls. Dave and his buddies had all pitched in for 47 game tickets and 47 dinner tickets. And now they were stuck waiting at the curb. Mike had a big day planned for his 10-year-old. So you were pretty bummed out. Yeah, more so for my son, to be honest with you. After hours of waiting, Dave finally reached the bus man. I talked to Spencer. He told me that the bus got into an accident. That story might have been believable had Spencer not told Pam almost the same story just the day before. I think he's a bad person. He rips people off. Pam booked and paid for a group shopping trip to New York. But Spencer and the bus never showed. I got the money, you know, from my friends and co-workers to go on this trip, and now 
they're calling me saying, you know, Pam, when are you going to give me my money back? Or, you know, have you heard from this guy? And I haven't heard from him. Pam's New York trip was scheduled from Friday night, September 19th, through Saturday night, the 20th. Dave's Cleveland trip was scheduled Saturday afternoon and evening. So why would you double book two trips with one bus? And if there were two buses, what are the odds they'd both be broken down? Spencer's answer? Talk to my lawyer. I found out a few things about Cedric Spencer. First off, he's got a bunch of complaints at the Better Business Bureau. Secondly, he's been sued for, of all things, taking a bunch of money, booking a trip, and then not showing up. That's the same thing that happened to Pam and Dave. Remember, Dave gave Spencer $1,100. Pam gave him more than $800. Time for me to catch a bus, man. Spencer agrees to meet up with my undercover cameraman at a Coney Island. He thinks he's going to book another trip. My cameraman leaves the restaurant at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And as soon as Spencer finishes his coffee, I'm going to nab him in the parking lot. But Spencer doesn't leave. Man, this is one long coffee break. Finally, at 7 o'clock, Spencer moves on out. What happened with that trip down to... Uh the Cleveland Indians game. Um, we had a bus breakdown. You had a bus breakdown? Yeah, I'm supposed to refund their money. I'm going to court. Yeah, are you are you gonna pay that guy the money back? Yeah, we're gonna pay him. Yeah, we're how much money are you gonna pay him? We got to talk it over with my lawyer. You're talking over with your lawyer? Well, what do you, what's on. the talk over, dude? Hold on. Uh, we gonna talk it over with my lawyer. Raise your hand if you've heard this one before. Tell me about the broken uh, down bus. Talk about. You can talk to my lawyer. Well, I don't want to talk to your lawyer, man. I want to talk to you. Talk to my lawyer. Well, who's your lawyer? Uh, What's his name? You can give it to me. Who will? Talk to my lawyer. Now, even though Spencer's vehicle is parked just steps away, he starts heading off towards a different restaurant. Do you talk own a bus? Sir. Talk to my lawyer, man. That's all I can tell you. Talk to your lawyer? Well, who's your talk lawyer? Talk to my lawyer. Okay. Talk Listen, man, are you going to answer my questions? No, just talk to my lawyer. Okay. All right. Talk to my lawyer. What are you going to do in here? Spencer mills around for a while, I guess, hoping I'll leave. But remember, I've been waiting for this guy for five hours. So, Cedric, what about this small you claims? Got, you got to talk to my lawyer about all Well, you that, got man. this Cedric, where, Cedric Spencer. You got a small claims judgment for 3000 Did you ever pay that? Where the heck is this guy going? I feel like he's on a low-speed restaurant call trying to shake me. After milling around here for a while, the manager tells the bus man to beat it. The restaurant's closed. What about all those poor people, those people that bought all those tickets to the game and everything, man? How could you let them down like that? Come on, man, talk to me. Why are you just running away? Talk to my lawyer. Now Cedric Spencer heads off down eight miles. He left his truck back at the restaurant. Oh, I know. Maybe he's going to catch a bus home. Hey, Spencer, your ride's here. Guess where we're going? The Hall of Shame. Say hi to Hugh. You're Hugh Williams, right? Uh, Hugh is quite the character. I ain't got no shame, no problem. Hugh's a stubborn kind of fella. Get the cameras out. No, I don't do it that way, man. I'm I a don't TV care reporter. How you do. Hugh's a builder who's built himself a world of trouble. See, Hugh's contractor's license has been suspended. I think you're still doing contracting work, though. Who cares what you think? Now, wait a minute. You said you think? Mm hmm. Oh, well, we ain't gonna worry about what you think. And Hugh owes a bunch of restitution to people he did contracting work for. Have you made any effort to pay any of the money? No. And are Hugh's customers mad? She went off. Ah! Hugh know it. Terry's a lady truck driver. I can't afford to give up $6,000. Yeah. That's a lot of money. She hired Hugh Williams to fix up her house. Oh, Hugh fixed it all right. Everything is crooked. My front picture wonder when it rains outside, water just pours into the windows. The work wasn't even up to city code. The two building inspectors that came out there told me they wouldn't have him build a dog house. Terry says Hugh Williams didn't care. Stubbornly, he told her. Oh, well, take me to court, do what you got to do. Terry did the right thing. She reported Hugh Williams to the State Builders Board. It's a long process, took a couple of years. 
but Terry came out on top. In May, the state of Michigan ordered Hugh Williams to pay Terry $6,000 in restitution. Hugh Williams even signed a document saying he'd pay her in 60 days. I'm still waiting on my money. He was also fined $1,000. He refuses to pay. This was Hugh's second fine this year. In March, he got in trouble with another victim. So Hugh's contracting license has been suspended. Is he still doing work? Yes, he's doing, uh, still doing work. Terry says she's seen him. So I have a Fox 2 undercover cameraman call Hugh Williams and take a look at a house that needs some work. Hugh shows up and goes up, saying he can fix the roof and driveway. So you're saying about 4500 <laughs> All right, because we're probably going to be doing a bunch of one-stop shopping with you. Now my guy asks you about his license. Now when you do all of this and this all, all that fall on your license. Mm -hmm. Hugh never writes up a contract, but does agree to do the job. You got a license for all of it. Okay, so I can just shop with you. Do everything with you? Yeah. A few days later, my undercover customer meets up with Hugh to seal the deal. Time for me to go to work. Hiya, Hugh. Rob Waltrick from Fox 2. Can I ask you some questions? You're Hugh Williams, right? Huh? You got your contractor's license what? on you, man? Hugh? What's up? You got your contractor's license on you? No. How come? Why well, should it? What's that? Why well, should it? Because you what don't... I, I know. Aren't you doing contracting work? Nope. Even though Hugh just got done meeting with my undercover cameraman about fixing up his house, He's sticking with his story. You're not doing contracting work? No, because you got a suspended license. Right. Hugh heads back to his truck, and I think he's ready to split. But instead, he seems to demonstrate a split personality. If you want to talk to me, talk to me. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to you right now. I ain't got no shame, no problem. I did not, you understand? In the first place, I agreed to pay it. I said I'm going to pay it. I believe in paying my debts if I owe them. Hugh says he doesn't have the money to pay his fines or restitution, so and he's not doing any contracting work. You're not still doing contracting work? you doing any contracting work? Sure looks like you were doing contracting work. I've seen you working some jobs. Saw you pitching some jobs. You were pitching a job to this guy today. Weren't you? One pitching job to him. What were you talking to him about? How about none of your business? After mumbling to himself in his truck a while, Hugh has one last thing to say. You too. See you later. It's always a nice day when I get to put someone like Hugh in the Hall of Shame.